Andre Wade was just released once again, just come to speak out on some things. Yeah. Man at work. Man at work. You know, I was uh thinking about, you know, some times of East Ham days and uh before I get started on this East Ham, I just wanted to say peace upon y'all families and I pray all is well with your little ones who is incarcerated. And uh Man, what's up with that cash out, man? I've been checking that cash out. Ain't nothing been going on. What's up with y'all, man? Y'all going, hey, man, let's hit that cash out. Let's hit that cash out. Let's, oh, yeah, hey, hey. Andre is in some need, man. Hey, I need some help, man. Where y'all at, man? I'm, I'm coming with these videos. Y'all steady requesting me to come with these videos. What's up with that cash out? And what's up, man? Y'all telling them about this, this just release? Y'all know y'all when y'all tell them about that just release? Y'all tell me that like button. Y'all start telling me that like button. Hey, man, it, and, and, and you know, that just release, is, instead of going up, it ain't going down. It's going up. So, you know, it's some good things about this just release. So, hey, man, y'all, let's hit that cash out. Let's hit that cash out this morning. Hey, man, somebody out there, somebody that is out there reviewing this here just release. Hey, let's hit that cash out and let's tell them people to hit them like buttons. Hey, man, hey, I, I just want to reminisce a little bit more uh, about East Ham and, and some of the things that, you know, that took place on East Ham. Uh, I was remembering a time, you know, they had some of the, the dangerous men in, in, in Texas prison that was on East Ham. You know, we had some guys like Wilbur Jones and and and, and uh, uh, all the link out men, you know, all these men that was considered as dangerous men, and, and, and they was at their time, and you know, in their days, you know, in the state of pre uh, Texas prisons. And I, I remember time, you know, like mornings like this here, you know, it was just, just that H time, just that H right now, you know, and, and this is kind of chilly uh, this morning, and uh, people was. You know, getting ready to go to work or already went to work. And uh I remember the times when you used to be sitting on the on the on the wagons and it used to be real foggy, you know. Uh they can't really take you out. And I remember we used to be praying that that fog wouldn't lift. But that old Captain Shepherd, old motor mile, a field force uh captain, he would have us sitting out there on that trailer until that fog lift, cause uh, he was going to take us to work. He was going to take us out there. I remember he used to storm at night. I'm talking about rain, rain, rain. And and me and my Sally, I had old Sally, he was out of Dallas. And we used to ride and drink coffee all night, smoking cigarettes and stuff. And we just knew we wasn't going to work. We might not go to work. We'd stay up to breakfast time and go to breakfast. And come back in and go to sleep. Next thing we know here, all that line for us to get ready. You should see it on the loudspeaker. All that line, get ready. And here come the boss on the run. All that line for us, get ready. Get ready, be ready, be ready. We like, man, I know this man ain't finna take us out to work. And it was raining last night. And we would get out there. And they be calling us out like I was in seven hole. And when seven hole come, we turn out and we, and we go to, you know, to the back. You know what I'm saying? And, and go through the shower and everything, go through the back gate. He'd be sending his ass out there. They have all them horses standing around and all these field bosses drinking coffee and eating donuts and shit. And, you know, ready to turn. I said, look out, Cap. I say, man, what you, I mean, it was raining last night. What we going out to work for? He said, oh, well, we going, it's dry. This man had been working over there so long on that facility. That he knew the dry spots, and like I, like he said, when we get out there, it'd be dry. But sometimes he would take us like on a 45-minute ride. And once we get out there, we might work like an hour and a half, and it's hat time. Hat time meaning, you know, it's time to go in for lunch. And we would come in for lunch. And, and, and when we come in for lunch, you know, uh, he didn't want no, if you wasn't in the line for us, he didn't want you in the chow line. He don't want nothing but his line for us workers in the chow line. And they used to tell, tell Cap Chip, they would say, hey, look out, Cap, the lieutenant of the building. He would say, Cap, uh, Ward Martin don't want you to uh, 
be doing that line for us like that, that child line. He said, don't tell me what that nigga said. Don't no nigga tell me how to run my line. Cause we had a head, our head ward at the time was a black man. So, you know, it was hard for Captain Shepard to adjust to this black man ways. Cause he, you know, Captain Shepard, you know, he was so racial and, 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 and so caught up in, in the way that you know, he want to run things, and he was so used to running things, you know, that 70 and 80 way that he was trying to do it even in the 90s. Like I said, we, uh, I was telling you on the Dirty Weather Show uh, that we picked the cotton for a long time on that facility. We picked cotton, and we, we, we worked at Aggie. You know, that Aggie was, is a hoe, you know, and, and, and we would be uh, working them ton rows. And they used to have a thing called... Uh, uh, four step, four step, two step, and you everybody be on time. Everybody got to be on time. And they line, they line to say one, two, three, four step. And you, you hit, you got that agate, and you going one, two, three, four step. And then they one, two, three, four step. And they line to say flip it over. And then when they say flip it over, every aggie got to flip over at the same time. So you had to be on time. And if you wasn't on time, he would say it again, flip it over. And then if it's flip it over, flip it over. And then and that's flipping over that aggie, flipping it over. And you had to be on time. And you know, you had, you, you was in shape. You know what I'm saying? If you was a fat boy, boy, you was in the world of trouble. Now, you better not be one of them. Them, them, them lazy guys that, that that somebody had to, you know, to take you, you know, pull your weight. Because if you got somebody trying to help you pull your weight, them dudes are going to want a favor, you know what I'm saying? They're going to want they gonna want some boudin, you know, some booty, boudaches, you know what I'm saying? Booty, you know, for uh, helping them, helping you. So, you know, I, hey, man, I used to be on time. You know, matter of fact, I used to be a... A lead row, how I was a tail row. I used to like to be the tail row because the tail row, you know, we, we you get to scratch, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, you get to, you know, take your time sometime because you got where a lot of people didn't get, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you, 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 you scraped up a lot of stuff. So I used to like to be the tail row a lot of times. And, you know, because, you know, it, it, that was easy. You was the spot chop. You know, and, 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 and that wild weeds and stuff, they call it spot chop. And, and, you know, we worked in the fields. The fields were, the Iron Force was a long time on uh, East Ham and Cofield, you know, them units that had them big fields. They had big fields, Cofield and uh, East Ham. Cofield was a uh, unit, you know, they called it the glass house. And, and, and it was rowdy, rowdy, you know what I'm saying? Ferguson, Ferguson was across the, the, the uh, the river of East Ham, you know, Ferguson was what the first unit I ever went to when I first went to prison. And, you know, you got looked at coming through the door. You know, you had to get out there, you had to scratch, you know what I'm saying, see what you was, you know what I'm saying. By me being out of Houston, you know, a lot of guys, you know what I'm saying, that was out of Houston, and I knew I had a lot of partners over there, and one of my best friends out of my neighborhood was there. So, you know, a lot of, you know, dudes want to, you know, see, what you was about, you know, if you're going to get out there, you know what I'm saying, somebody lying to call you out, look out, homie, catch the square, you know, and that's how it was, you caught that square. If you didn't catch that square, oh, man, I don't want to fight, but you don't want to fight. Motherfucker say, you man, catch that square, you caught that square, win or lose, you got that out there in that square, and you got rid of it, you know, show what you had, you know, and, and Dre was going to get out there, you know, it didn't matter, I got out there. But some of them guys you had to watch, man. Some of them dudes had some big old ass hands, you know what I'm saying? Big rust ass knuckles, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we used to have them, you know, the gloves. We had a certain type of gloves we used to wear. They called them pistols, you know what I'm saying? And I used to be wondering if you seen somebody with some pistols in their back pocket, that mean he had something. And I used to be one of them guys, I had back, some pistols in my back pocket, you know what I'm saying? After, after uh, squabbling a couple of times, dude knew that I was going to get out there. And, and I told you about the front bench. You know, everybody didn't sit on the front bench. I remember when I first got to Ferguson and, and didn't nobody, you know, sit on the front bench. And, you know, it'd be like daytime, you know what I'm saying? Early in the day, everybody going to work or something. So you're not to be sitting on the front bench because ain't nobody sitting on the front bench. So somebody might come up there and say, look out, man, get your ass up off this bench. And you'd be like, what? Get your ass up off this bench. You had to you had to fight your way to the front bench. Yeah, Dre sat on the front bench. Dre Dog sat on the front bench. 
Yeah, on East Ham, on Ferguson, yeah, on Robertson, on Telford, everywhere I went. I sat on the front bench, but everywhere I went, I didn't have to fight. Because when Dredal got off the bus, they knew that was Dredal. You know, where it already got spread. It man, Dredal go over there on seven building. You know, yeah, Dredal on the unit, man. Dredal on the unit, man. You know, a lot of people knew me throughout the system after being, you know, incarcerated for so long. And and I, like I said, I did 10 years on East Ham. So and a, and a lot of people that was on East Ham got shipped, you know what I'm saying? And, and and word of mouth, you know what I'm saying? Word of mouth, you know, travel, you know? And, and when telephones came into the system, you know, illegal telephones, you know, people can easily do paper checks on you, you know what I'm saying? Find out, you know, what you're about, you know, cause you know, them gang members and all kind of people had phones. So it was easy to call, you know, the East Ham or Styles or somewhere and check up on cotton tech character wood, why you got shipped and things like that, you know? And so, you know, when my, my, my backtrack, my paper chase was was all good in all forms, you know? I wasn't no snitch or none of that. I'm going to play them women, you know what I'm saying? That's That was my thing. I'm going to fuck with them laws, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have me a law. I'm going to get out there and get me a law, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't care where I'm at. Where well, and the job I get, like I, I, I went to Telford. I'll never forget when I went to Telford. And Telford was a ton, kind of union, you know, they had a lot of youngsters, you know what I'm saying? They didn't get a lot of old uh, school dudes. So when I got there and I had a 56 number. So when the warden them seen 56, they asked me where I wanted to work, you know what I'm saying? They say, man, we need guys like yo, you. They want you to babysit them youngsters. You know, youngsters had respect. For older cats that been locked up, you know, not just because you old, but because you've been locked up a long time. So them youngsters, they be wanting, you know, uh, they be wanting that game, you know what I'm saying, that you have. But, you know, not only did I have game, but I had an ability to think and, and an ability to, to share what was right and what a person needed to do in order to survive because all units wasn't the same. Just because they was doing it one way on Telford didn't mean they was doing it another way in other places. Because, like I say, I was on East Ham. And it wasn't all about just squabbling on East Ham. You know, in today's time, I think is East Ham has got a lot of youngsters. But when I was there, it was it was a lot of old cats. And them cats, man, you know, them, they played for keeps, like I say, man. Them boys, them boys believe in, in stabbing, you know what I'm saying? It, you weren't finna find no bunch of fights, you know. It went on. I never forget. It was these two guys on East Ham, and these dudes. They had to try to separate these dudes, man, cause these dudes fought every day that they seen one another. They seen one another three times that day. They fought. I'll never forget. <coughs> I was coming down the hallway, and I was going towards the infirmary. And one, one of the guys, he was in the line that I was coming in. And the other guy was in the line that was coming the opposite way towards us. Man, these dudes spotted one another right off. The, out, right off. And they just came into the middle of the hallway and just would scrap it. I'm talking about wasn't no talk, just blah, 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 blah. They was going at it, man. And they had to ship one of them guys, man, because them guys were going to eventually, you know, kill, uh, kill one another. And I remember the... Uh, the first one of the first uh, stabbings, uh, deaths that went on, I, it was a, a Puerto Rican guy. He was out of Houston. As a matter of fact, he was going to trial at the time I was going to trial in 1990. And in Puerto Rican, uh, he ended up on East Ham with me. He was, and, and he, he was on close custody. So this Spanish dude told the man they had gotten into an argument and they had a fight at first in the day room. So the, the, uh, the, the, the Spanish guy told him, he said, that's all right, motherfucker. He said, soon they want in and out, I'm going to kill your goddamn ass. So, so Puerto Rican wasn't never saying nothing. He wasn't never saying nothing. No, nah, I take that back. He was a Colombian. He was a Colombian dude. So he had never said nothing. Man. He was just waiting on that in and out. When they ran that in and out, and they both went in their cells. I don't know what that Spanish dude was thinking about, but Colombian had a different thing on his mind. When they came out on that end and out, and they closed that day room door, and it was on H Block. It was on H Block, on close custody on East Ham. Colombia, when they locked that door, Colombia went to stabbing the shit out that Mexican. 
went to stabbing the shit out that dude. Stabbed him till he died right there in the day room. He died. That dude died. That Columbia killed him. And, and, you know, those are the things that took place, you know, from word of mouth. You know, it's just some things you didn't say. You know, all that old bumping about, I'm going to whoop you, I'm going to whoop you. They had another partner of mine. He was out of third ward named Turbo. Turbo was uh, on a weightlifting team. And and he was uh, in the shower one day, in the shower room. Turbo was real cocky, kind of tall. And he was fucking with another partner I was, that was out of Dallas. And the dude that was out of Dallas, he fucked with them punks. So a lot of dudes felt like, you know, because motherfuckers fuck with punks, it's something, you know, weak about them. But ain't nothing weak about them when it comes to them hands and, and the ability to uh, do something to you. Yeah, he fucked with them punks, but he was a killer. He was a fool with them hands. And so Turbo went off on him. Bitch ass, motherfucker, whole ass, motherfucker, punk loving ass, no end. And blam, 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 bloom. Turbo, like I say, he was on the weightlifting team, you know. Some dudes think because they got all the muscles that a motherfucker scared of them. A motherfucker don't be scared of them muscles. Them be some of the weakest motherfuckers sometimes. Can't even fight, but do a lot of bumping because of their size. So Turbo doing all that bumping, bitch ass, whole ass, nigga. Bring your bitch ass behind that cage, I'm gonna beat your bitch ass. So at all this time, he bumping. So the nigga just sat there, listened to him do all that bumping. So when he went in that shower and went to shower, and he, like I said, it's one of them open base showers, one of them big showers, you know what I'm saying? And so soon he went in that shower, and that nigga waited until he went to washing his hair. Washing his hair. And then when that soap went in his face and all them subs, that nigga came from behind that cage. And whooped the dog shit out of Turbo. I mean, whooped the dog shit out of Turbo. I'm talking about butt Turbo butt naked with all that shot soap in his face. Man, that nigga whooped the dog shit out of Turbo all the way into the hall. Turbo ain't get a chance to get the soap out of his face. I'm talking about that nigga whooping him. And these are what took place in the penitentiary advantages. You know what I'm saying? People. Seen advantages to get your ass, and you had to watch that. You know what I'm saying? Because you know it used to be a time you didn't even wash your face in the shower. You didn't wash. Rapes went on in the shower. Motherfuckers got raped in the shower. So you didn't. You wash your hair at the house. You showered and washed your hair in the cell. Yeah, you wash your hair in the cell. You didn't go in there and wash. I don't. You know. I don't care how bad you felt you would. You know what I'm saying? Unless you had some partners with you in the shower. You know, you had some partners with you when you went to the shower. You ain't had to worry about that. You can do all that. Everybody ain't have no partners like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you didn't wash your hair until you went into the cell. Now, I mean, and, I, and I'll never forget. I was Like I said, I was SSI on P-Line. So Turbo stayed on P-Line. And I had only heard about the fight. So I hadn't seen Turbo since the fight. So when I went up, you know, Turbo stayed on three rows. You know, they had one, two, and three rows. You know what I'm saying? Three rows. And Turbo stayed all the way at the top, all the way to the end. So when I went down there, because I always fucked with Turbo, we used to get high all the time. We smoked the weed together all the time. So when I went to a, to a cell, <laughs> the man looked at like a raccoon. Man, when that nigga turned around, I said, God damn. That nigga said, yeah, Dre, that nigga whooped my ass. That nigga name was Pain. I never forget. Pain beat the dog shit out of Turbo. That nigga said, yeah, man. Turbo went and apologized to that nigga. That nigga whooped Turbo so rough. Pain, that nigga went and apologized to Pain. And, and that nigga told me, that nigga said, Dre, that nigga whooped shit out of me, man. I ain't even mad. And Turbo wasn't no coward, like I say, just because he was a big old nigga didn't mean he couldn't fight. It's just that pain took the advantage of the situation and cause Turbo felt like, you know, cause he was so big and, and he was a beast too, that, that you know, saying that he can, you know, say anything and do anything and, 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 and found out that he couldn't do that. It was a nigga gonna whoop his ass and a nigga beat the shit out of Turbo. And these are some of the things that took place in the penitentiary on East Ham at the time. Advantages of, uh, of times to, to hurt a motherfucker, to whoop a motherfucker. All these things took place in the penitentiary 
on each hand. And, 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 and it's to an advantage of, 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 of right now today, even right now today, you know, this can help people, you know what I'm saying, when you go to them penitentiaries where they dangerous, you know, because like I say, he's saying it was a massive security unit, and, and, and wasn't nothing weak about it, it was, it was a dangerous place, you know, and these things on rookie that, that go, went on on East Ham, you know, I ain't just telling you no, no bull con, I'm telling you some real life stories, and that's why you got to hit that cash shot, that's why y'all got to hit that cash shot, man, y'all got to help uh, Dre, y'all got to help Dre, you know what I'm saying, I ain't got no job, man, and and I'm, I'm, I'm giving y'all what y'all want to hear on a daily basis. Help me out. Help me out. Hit that cash out. Hit that damn cash out this morning. You know what I'm saying? Hit that cash out this evening whenever you're able. You know what I'm saying? Help me out. Because I'm in the need of some help. Because, hey, man, I got a memory. And I got so much yet to come. And I'm just giving you bits and pieces of it. I'm giving you bits and pieces of it. Because, see, I know, I know you want to hear what I got to say. I know you want you waiting on Andre Wade was just released. You know what Andre got to say today? What Andre got for us today? Andre gonna always have something. Y'all already see them boys in California feeling it. All I'm all I'm doing interviews with them boys all out of Cali. And I and I did another show with the Spanish guy show. And, and, and then he, he titled it Mandingo. Mandingo Warrior. Just released Andre Wade. Hey man, I'm in something. I'm into something. Hey, y'all like that too. Y'all like that. Y'all like that. Y'all like Andre Way. Hit that cash out and show you how much you like Andre. Yeah, show how much you like Andre Way. Yeah, because uh, Andre Way just need us some help. So y'all help me out best as you can. I ain't, I ain't asking for much. I'm just asking for enough. Hey, this is Andre Way who just released, and I'll be back with something else.